Welcome into New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's show, we're just going to have a conversation because it's almost been 24 hours since the news of Donovan Mitchell being traded to the New York Knicks. So on today's show, I just wanted to outline like a four-step plan I think the Knicks need to do before the season starts and what they need to do in the season because there's a lot of different ways the Knicks could go right now. And a lot of people have asked me, What's next for the Knicks? And we're going to break that down in the show today. And these are things I would do, and I would hope the front office led by Leon Rose and World Wide West would do. But with it being a day later, the emotions taken out of it, and I'm not mad. I'm just a little bit disappointed. Like when your dad tells you or your mom, I'm not mad at you. I'm just a little disappointed. Felt a little bit like a gut punch. But I'm glad the Knicks didn't trade Obi. I'm glad the Knicks didn't trade RJ, and I'm glad they didn't trade quickly or Quinton Grimes. You get to keep the kids, and I don't don't like to call them kids, young men, the young players, and see how they build. So I want to ask you guys, how are we feeling today on Friday at about noon? Let me know how we're feeling following the Donovan Mitchell trading going forward as the New York Knicks. My four-step plan. Step one, find a freaking direction. Find out what this team, this organization, this front office wants to do. Because right now, you kind of have a foot in left field, you got a foot in right field, and your sack is right in center field. You have to figure out what you want to do. You can't have it both ways. And what do I mean by that? I like what Schwinney Poo on Twitter said. He said, the Knicks front office has three weeks now to consolidate the roster and find a way to make a move of at least trading two of Randall, Fournier, and Rose. This is the best part. Great tweet right here. He said, not giving up the house for Donovan Mitchell because you don't want to give up the majority of your young core and picks only matters if you invest in opening up minutes for them. And that is a great way to put it. You can say we want to keep all these young guys. We have 10 players on this roster younger than 26. And you can say you want to keep all of them. We want to keep RJ. We want to keep uh, grind. We want to keep quickly. We want to keep topping. We don't want to trade Reddish. And you can do that. And you want to keep all your picks. You can do that. But it only makes sense if you invest in opening up minutes for them. Because remember, going forward, the Knicks have a boatload of draft picks coming up. And if you're going to keep older guys on your roster, like Randall, like Fournier, and like Derrick Rose, and you already have 10 players on your roster younger than 26, where are the four draft picks that you could potentially have in 2023 going to play? Yes, some are protected. They could convey in 2024, 2025, or 2026. But in the next three years, you have seven first-round picks. And if you truly want to hold on to those picks and you want to hold on to your young guys, you need to open up minutes for them to play. You need to nurture them. You need to give them the playing time they need to become the stars that you think they can because not including Grimes in a trade puts a lot of pressure on him. And if you hold on to Evan Fournier, you hold on to Randall. I love Derrick Rose, but he's a 33-year-old player with a broken down body. Let's just keep it 100. Only played in 26 games last year. If you keep all three of these guys, if you don't make any more moves going up until the season, you still don't have a direction. You can't do everything. You can't try to make the playoffs with bets. You can't try to play the young kids. You can't try to win and build through the draft. You have to find a concise vision and move forward and stick to the script if you're the New York Knicks. I think you got to trade two of these guys. I would go with Randall and Fournier. I think it's cool to keep Derrick Rose. This is why you subscribe, though, to New York Knicks Now. We went live on the channel two times yesterday. We put out three videos. We went live when the Cam Reddish trade request went through. Then we went live when Donovan Mitchell got traded to another team. So subscribe to New York Knicks now because this train is not stopping and we're only speeding up going from here. Videos every single day. And we're also going to be doing some post-game shows following games live on the channel. So hit that big red button. We're trying to get to 14,000 followers for our guy Mace. You got to consolidate the roster at some point. Because like we showed you a second ago, 10 players on this roster younger than the age of 26. And it is a log jam right now coming off the bench. Like we talked about, if you want to hold on to the kids, you want to hold on to the picks, you got to find minutes to play them. And right now, if you're going to hold on to Randall and Fournier, where are guys like Cam Reddish, 
Obi Toppin, Jericho Sims, and Quentin Grimes going to get the minutes that they deserve. If you trade Randall and you trade Evan Fournier, that opens up a lot of minutes for a guy like Cam Reddish and Quentin Grimes and as well as Obi Toppin. And that is the direction the New York Knicks decided to go yesterday. And I am 100% cool with it. But at some point, you have to consolidate assets. And I think sooner than later, and I'd like it to be before the season, you got to trade Fournier or Randall, Or maybe even both. I want to ask the real ones out there. Should the Knicks trade Fournier and Randall? I'm curious what you think because there's a lot that goes into this, no doubt. Um, the Knicks probably still think they can be a 42-win team. But does it really mean a lot to win 42 games when you're not giving minutes to Obi, to Grimes, and to Reddish? You're not finding out what you have in the future. We saw two years ago. We we were in the fourth seed. But we really took ourselves out of being in a prime position to add a lottery talent. And this upcoming draft is incredible. We need to have a prime pick. That's where we got to go. Type K for keep or type T for trade. I also want to give a shout out to all of the real ones out there because you guys have been holding it down and showing up and showing out. And if you're a real one, get yourself a shirt. I was rocking mine on the show yesterday. Not a memorable day. But go to chatsports.com slash real Knicks. That's chatsports.com slash real Knicks. And when you get your shirt, take a picture of it. Send it to me on Twitter at MarshallGreen underscore, and we'll put it on the show. Let's ride. Run it with the youth. You got to run it with the young guys. See what the youngins have. Guys like Cam Reddish and Obi Toppin and Quentin Grimes and Miles McBride. You have to see what this team has. And I know we said it over and over again, but if you keep Randall and you keep Fournier, that's just eating up minutes for guys that are on this roster. You need to find out what you have in Cam Reddish. You need to see if he is a guy that was worth trading a first-round pick for. If you trade a first-round pick for him and you hold on to Randall and you hold on to Evan Fournier, where is he going to play? If you watch the show all the time, I'm not the biggest fan of Reddish. I see the potential. I know he has it. It's time for us to unlock that potential by giving him necessary minutes, 15 to 22 minutes per night. That ain't much to ask for. But if you hold on to Randall and you hold on to Fournier, that ain't going to happen. And step number four, do not, do not make a stupid trade right now. David Aldridge, he was on Twitter talking about how the Knicks should throw picks at the Indiana Pacers for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. And that's the stupidest thing I could think the Knicks could do right now. Do not make a move where you have to attach one of these assets that does not make you a significantly better ball club. And I know we talked about trading Julius and Evan Fournier, but Leon Rose in this organization better not attach an asset via a draft pick to trade Randall or Fournier. Because if you do that, but you were unwilling to add the necessary picks to go and make a trade for Donovan Mitchell, you continue to contradict yourself. Build with youth. Play the young guys. Find a vision and do not make a stupid trade. You have all the assets right here. At some point, you will have to consolidate assets, and I still think the Knicks will try to make a trade for a superstar when one becomes available. But right now, the vision of this team needs to be youth, playing the young guys, and trying to better this team for the future. Playing Randall and playing Fournier does not do that. There's a lot of talk. Who is the next star that is going to become available? Because with the treasure chest of first-round picks that the New York Knicks have right now, they have a vision. That is clear that they want to make a trade. That's why Leon Rose was brought here, to bring that superstar to the Mecca at MSG. Hasn't happened yet. It's going to have to happen. He's not going to be along for, or long, around for much longer, in my opinion. Predict it. Who's the next star to become available in a trade? Right as the Donovan Mitchell announcement happened, the Knicks put out this statement. They announced the signing of R.J. Barrett. Leon Rose says, We are thrilled to announce a well-deserved extension for R.J. Barrett, a core piece of our team's foundation. At only 22 years old, he has elevated his game each season, solidifying himself as a force on both ends of the court. We believe he will continue to improve because of his passion for the game and dedication to his craft. We want to continue to build our team and culture around players like RJ who possess these values and qualities. I love that RJ Barrett's back for the next five years. And I honestly think the Knicks got him somewhat as a steal. Right now, this upcoming year, he's going to make $23.9 million. 
And then on the last year of his deal, he's going to make 29.6. It's a four-year, $107 million deal with the opportunity for it to go up to $120 million if Barrett reaches incentives, like all-NBA, all-star, and all-defense. Look, RJ, year four, it's going to be a movie, guys. Because not trading for Mitchell means RJ's role on offense is going to grow bigger. And I can't wait to see what he looks like with a real point guard in Jalen Brunson. He's never played with one. And I think he's going to help he, being Brunson, help RJ be a better and more efficient player like he was in 2020 when he shot 44% from the field and 40% from downtown. I don't know if uh, RJ is ever going to be a 40% three-point shooter for his career. But can he be a 37, 36? I think that's very doable. And if RJ shoots 43% from the field and 36, 37% from three and averages 18, 19 points per game, 20 points per game, all New York Knicks fans would be very happy. And you got to go and look at what RJ did in the final 42 games of the season this year. He put on a clinic averaging 24 points per game, nearly four assists, shooting almost 42% from the field and almost... 35% from downtown. I know a lot of the efficiency nerds out there, his true shooting percentage was only 54. Well, Shea Gilgis Alexander was 55, and everyone crowns him as the next Penny Hardaway. So I know when you're on the Knicks, you get graded to a different scale, but I'm all in on R.J. Barrett, and I am thrilled that he was not a part of that Donovan Mitchell trade. I said it the whole time. R.J. Barrett was untouchable for me. I wouldn't include him in a trade, and I'm glad he's back and he's going to be able to reach his potential with the New York Knicks. Let's show RJ some love because he's our guy. He's homegrown, first player since Charlie Ward that was drafted in the first round to sign a multi-year extension by the New York Knicks. Type 9 in the comments section. Let's show RJ some love. He deserves it, and I'm glad that he's a New York Knick. If you made it this far in the video, drop a real one in the comments section. We've been doing it a lot recently. It's because I like to see who the real ones are. I like to see who finishes the video. Go down in the comments. I see who types it, and I like to show love to you guys. So I like to decipher. He's a fake guy. He's probably a Jazz fan. And then this guy, he's a Knicks fan. He's a real one. So if you made it this far in the video, that makes you a real one. So drop it in the comments section right now.